Hey everyone, welcome to our Tuesday night team hangout. We have such a special guest here with us and I'm just delighted to introduce her. You all know who she is. Jenna is from Florida, actually down by our friend Leanne Britton and they've gotten together a couple different times, but I am just so excited to hear what she has to share with us. Um, she's just such a genuine, real person. We actually officially met on the beach, I think in Mexico, possibly, I think. And she just took the second away from all of her friends and family to just stop and talk to me. And it just really made an impression on me. So without further ado, Jenna Hudala is going to share with us and I can't wait. Yay, thank you. I love that I've gotten to meet both of you, you and Joanna on the beach. I, Joanna and I met in Hawaii this last year. No, was it? No, was it Mexico? I lose track. You yeah, guys, Mexico. Like when you start losing track of how many free trips you've been on, you're winning. <laughs> that sounds crazy to even say, doesn't it? Like just let that sink in for a second. Doesn't that sound crazy to say? But here we are in a season where we have won the right products. We have had the right products for years and more than ever, you're hearing more and more people talk about them. Can you say thank you to all the advertisers out there doing all the work for us? Thank you for talking about the microbiome and gut health. Now, unfortunately, they're just sharing wrong products, but they do a lot of legwork for us. We get to come along and share products that actually work. I remember, I don't know if you guys see it. I have to remember too in different areas that you don't always have the same commercials we do. But Leanne and I have a commercial down here in South Florida. And it was something along the line of like happy poopers. Like, right, Leanne, you remember seeing that? It was fabulous. They're like every woman poops. And they had different women, different bathrooms. They had like, some were like really aesthetic. Some were like kids laying on the floor. It was like, great marketing. I was like, yay. I was like, I want to steal that hashtag. <laughs> hashtag happy pooper. Like I get that. I just did a post. We can't actually on our bags, like your day just got better. I understand it can't really say like, congratulations, you're going to poop today. Like it can't, but the reality of it is everybody poops. If you're not pooping consistently, then you probably are not healthy. So that was me. If we had met five and a half years ago, I would have been bald. I would have been 70 pounds overweight. I was chronically constipated. People would ask me, when is the next baby coming? There wasn't a baby. No. And if you're not sure, don't ask. Like there's an unwritten rule, right women? Like, listen. And even if you maybe are sure, she's like nine months, still don't ask. Because you just don't know. It could be a lot of poop in there. That was my case. So what that ended up doing was that chronic constipation was over like a 20 year span. I thought that was normal because it would have been my normal. The only time that I went to the bathroom was if I was pregnant. That's actually how we knew I was pregnant. Seven times. We'd start going to the bathroom. My husband would be like, Ooh, what's going on? I was like, ah, surprise. So we do have seven kids. They are all from the same daddy. We do know how that happens. We own a TV, okay? We just got really good at something. But while you got really good at one thing, I really neglected myself in the process, right? I would tell you that I got great at taking care of everybody else, but I totally neglected me in the process. How many times do we like make sure the kids have the shoes? You make sure your kids have underwear and socks. But I was still like my baby, He's seven now. I just got new bras two years ago. So I was wearing maternity bras and the baby hadn't been nursing for three years. Can you relate? <laughs> Listen, I love me some maternity bras. They are great. They're not that supportive. Let's be honest. Victoria's Secret has quickly become my new best friend. It is fun to learn to take care of yourself. But I believe for a long time that it was selfish a long time. And in that whole season, I really neglected me. And so all of that stuff just compounded into crazy symptoms, which would end me up in the emergency room nine times in nine months. Nine times, nine appointments, nine follow-ups, 
countless other doctor's visits, nine different prescription medications with crazy side effects. And it wouldn't take, take about 18 months before I actually got a diagnosis. And when I finally got a diagnosis, it was thyroid failure. You're in thyroid failure. That's what's going on. That's why you have all of these crazy symptoms. That's why you're losing all of your hair. That's why you had to shave your head. That's why you're wearing wigs. That's why you can't lose weight. That's why your menstrual cycles are insane. That's why you have insomnia. That's why you have anxiety and depression. That's why you can't go to the bathroom. That's why you're on hormone replacement therapy at 40. Y'all, that did not go down the way I thought it would. I thought I was gonna turn 40 years old and I was gonna rock it. I was like, this is the year. I'm gonna start working out. I'm gonna join a gym. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. And instead I would end up in the emergency room the last place I wanted to be. And I finally sat in my doctor's office with my husband and we had this conversation. It was the, am I crazy conversation? Am I losing my mind? Am I making this stuff up? Because see on some labs, I looked normal. My labs were within normal. But for me, they were anything but normal. My body was in failure. Now this is the crazy part. I'm about to blow your mind. Are you ready? Ever skeptic over here. I knew about plexus. I knew about plexus for four years. During all that crazy stuff, I saw other girls having amazing results. But because my skepticism was so strong and my criticism, because it was network marketing. Oh, we don't do that. That's illegal. No, it's not. That's a pyramid scheme. That is illegal. This is direct selling. This is network marketing. This is not illegal. This is actually an incredible business model that a lot of people don't understand. And I was one of them. So for four years, I watched other people have amazing results and they had incredible transformations. While I was over here getting sick, getting heavier, not able to maintain uh, any kind of normal with the kids, I would sit on this couch and they would be doing school because we're crazy, we do homeschool too. So I'd be schooling the kids here on the couch and falling asleep at 10 o'clock in the morning because the medication would kick in, it would knock me out, I would fall asleep. And then I'd wake up and they'd be finishing their little ABC book. What kind of life is that for little babies? But it was all I thought, I thought it was normal. If we just could medicate, we could hope to treat my symptoms. But in just that thought process alone, I was settling. I was settling for so much in that season of my life. But it wasn't until someone that I absolutely love and I know and I trust dearly that she reached out to me in love. She was not reaching out to me in a, hey girl, gonna sell me something. She was a, hey girl, I got something you need. I love you. And I saw this testimony and it made me think of you immediately. You gotta check this out. And that changed everything because I knew her and I loved her and I trusted her. So she thought this was gonna work for me, I believed her. I was still a little skeptical. I honestly thought it was crystal light. I was like, I don't know what makes that thing pink. It can't be artifice, it can't be real. It's gotta be something fake. Who knew about beets? I did not even like them. I had no idea what they were. I didn't even know they were good for you. No, but you know what? I borrowed her belief because she believed in the products. Even though I was skeptical, she believed in me and she believed in the products and the company. So I believed her. I said, okay, I'm going to give this a shot. If it works, great. If it doesn't, I'm getting my money back. That was my mindset. But in a matter of weeks, I started to go to the bathroom. That was a big, and I wasn't pregnant. <laughs> that was a big deal. My hair started growing out. People at church started recognizing that something different was going on. And that's how I accidentally started a business. Because remember, in my head, it was one of those things. And being in women's ministry and being in marriage ministry within our church, being a busy mom of seven kids, homeschooling. Can you make up my own excuses for me? Yeah, right? Because you might be telling yourself that. Too busy, don't have time. I was barely even on social media then. Like if we were not in actual relationship, 
You weren't seeing any of my stuff. I had closed social media accounts. <laughs> like that was it. So I didn't have time to go do one more thing. But in that, it was such a selfish mentality. Because once I started to realize that the products worked, whew, talk about conviction. Like even talking about it makes my chest hurt. <laughs> it's like, oh, I couldn't not tell people about what I had found. See, my sister is struggling. My mom was struggling. My dad, my brother, my husband, my in-laws, my best friend. Like all these people all of a sudden started flooding in that what if? this stuff worked for them like it is for me. So I focused on point people, not points. Honestly, I didn't even know how any of that worked over there. I didn't even care. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm just so excited that you're going to love this pink drink as much as I do. And they did because they borrowed my belief. Like I had borrowed my sponsor's belief. And before you knew it, we got to about three months in and I can remember we were sitting in this above ground little pool. We call it like a redneck pool here in the South. It's one of those plastic pools. It's like only up to your hips. The kids love it. It's great for them. It's like a $400 little above ground pool. Maybe you get a whole summer out of it in South Florida if you're lucky. My husband and I were bathing in the sun pool, like in this pool, the two adults in this little bitty pool. No kids in sight. We we're just hanging out in this pool and we started dreaming again. We start dreaming again and we're, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. And I'm thinking I look pretty good. I've lost about 15 pounds at this point. I'm like, hey, feeling pretty. I'm feeling myself. I'm in a bikini in the backyard. Nobody's gonna ever see me. <laughs> Little did I know that I would have a bikini before picture go viral, which I totally blocked every pastor I've ever known from seeing. Okay, because I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't wanna walk in the church and have them have that visual, never. So that they're blocked permanently from ever seeing that. My dad, my brother, my in-laws, my brother-in-law, they're all blocked. Like they can't see that stuff, right? They can just see the little face side by sides. I'm fine with that. But what ended up happening in that pool that day was that we started dreaming and we started thinking like, oh my gosh, like what if this works? Like at that point, I uh, blessed my first three friends and then my next three and then my next three, I was like right there at Senior Silver. Again, I had no intention of building a business. I was too busy. I was homeschooling. I had a lot of kids. We were in ministry. We were doing all the things. I didn't have time for this. But that third month, I can remember that I got a phone call from my diamond upline, Bridget Ryan. She was in Australia. And she had seen this somebody down really deep low. I don't even know. I think I was like a level seven for her somewhere, all of a sudden start popping up in her back office. And I heard you guys talking about it right before I came on. It is so much fun when you check your back office, all of a sudden you got people coming in. You're like, I don't even know who they are. At first, it kind of stresses you out because you want to have control over all of the things and you need to know everybody's people. But as you grow, two things you have to remember, you cannot have exponential growth and control at the same time. Oh, that was hard because I'm mama seven. So like, I like to control stuff. I like everybody to match. I like to know that the, everything has a place in the house. I like to know that where the scissors are, the scissors go. I like to know that there's no slime hiding in my couch furniture, right? Like I did, but I realized that when she called, she saw something in me that I didn't see in myself at that point. So we got on that call and she was in Australia and we were just talking and she was doing such a great job of just giving me a bigger vision. Like, like, I'm so proud of you. What are you doing over there? And I was like, I have no clue. I'm just excited. I'm sharing. I found something I love that actually works. She was like, great. Don't stop doing that. Keep doing that. Keep being you. You are enough. You don't need to be like anybody else. You don't need to be copy and paste in other people's posts. Be yourself. Your voice matters. And what you have to say is important and people want to hear you. I was like, okay. Although I had no idea what I was saying. Totally not compliant. I'm pretty sure I am on compliance speed dial list. Like I'm number one. Well, there's Jenna again. B, 
because I had no idea. I was like, listen, I was like, I even have a video that popped up, Joanna and Katie, the first time I ever went live. My hair was like this long. I was so excited because I could get it like in a little ponytail. And then I had like a do-rag or a handkerchief, okay? No makeup, no bra. You will never see me do a live with no bra on ever again. But there's one out there. I was just so excited because that's the night my blood work came back. That autoimmune disease I had had for years was gone because of supplementation, because of nutrition, because I was doing the things. I wasn't just sucking on a pink drink, hoping that was going to be the answer on my couch. I was actually doing all the things. I was watching what I was eating, what I was fueling my body with. I was drinking my water. I was taking my products like my life depended on it. This does. Once you feel good, like truly feel good, you could sit in a place where your body doesn't hurt. Just take a deep breath. Like right now in this moment. Take that big, deep breath and really get in touch with how you feel. Like you could be tired. Maybe it's your bedtime. Maybe you've had a long day, but I can tell you I've had a long day. I was winning today. I got an enrollment. I had coaching calls. I had all this stuff. I went to sushi. I rushed home. I fluffed my hair. Like I tried. I'm here. I'm winning, but nothing hurts. That's a win. That's a win. So when Bridget said that she believed in me, and I didn't need to be anybody but me. I was enough. My next question was like, well, like I was intrigued. Honestly, hadn't had anybody believe in me outside of my husband. Like you're a good wife. You're a good mother. I love the way you scrub the floors. <laughs> Stay up late. See you after kids go to bed. Right? Why please stop I mean, I was raised in a house where, like, I got married young. I was 15 and he was 16. Well, no, when we met. Matter of fact, I was 18, he was 19 when we got married. Okay, we've been together a long time. So doing that and never going to college, I was raised in a house that was like, well, there's that, good luck. Then you have seven kids. Oh, you're just never gonna amount to anything. You're gonna be a mom. And there's nothing wrong with being a mom. I guess the single best job you're ever gonna have in the entire lifespan. You're raising up the next generation of world changers, right? That's your greatest influence is those little people that are in your own house. Please raise them up to be good human beings. Kind, loving, generous, all those attributes, right? That's like, that's our priority, that doesn't change. But see, I knew that there was something bigger and that bigger scared me at times. And so I shied away from it because you can't tell I'm a lot. For all the girls in the house that are a lot, it's okay. I'm a lot for some people and I'm not enough for others. And then for some people I'm too much. That's okay. I'm gonna be me and that's all I can be. I don't wanna challenge you to be you. Not a second class somebody else. You are wonderfully, beautifully made to be uniquely you. That's it. So I built a business on that concept. I was going to love and serve others well, live by that golden rule, treat them the way I wanted to be treated. And that was like, that was it. I didn't have any big aspirations initially. But as I started to get on more calls and I started to pursue coaching, because how could I do something that I had never done before? Or how could I like learn a new skill set? or even that I had crazy mindset issues with self-worth and with belief and with like limiting beliefs, money issues, like you talk about it, I have had it. So as I got on these coaching calls, I realized that one of the things that I needed to work on was one, I need to work on me. Because if anything is gonna change, it starts with me. In order for anything to change, I need to change. And then this incredible thing happens. It's called the bombshell theory. Inherently, when you change, everything around you changes. We're good or not so much. So I got to choose. And in choosing, I was going to choose to get better, not bitter. A long time, I lived a very bitter life. If people just did what I told them to do, I, I wouldn't behave like this. 
if kids just did what I told them, if, if my husband just behaved and just, if he was my chip and I was his Joanna, we'd be okay. I actually said that to him once in a DIY project. I don't advise saying that to your husband, especially if he knows who Chip and Joanna are. Like if he doesn't know, it's just don't do it, okay? Did not end well. But one of the things that was really powerful and so simple in my early coaching days was an hour a day. I was like, what do you mean an hour a day? See, I was still believing the lie that I was just too busy to work this as a business. And Bridget said, could you do an hour a day? Yeah, I can do an hour. I figured that out. I could do 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes at night. She was like, you could do 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes at night, 30 minutes in the morning. Like you could figure it out. So I learned about something called time blocking. What? Where have this been my whole life? Like time blocking. Now, initially, I did not like this because I would like to tell you, I just want to show up and do what I want. And if we want to school this day, we're going to school this day. And if we don't, it's okay. Let's go to the beach and we're going to do oceanology. I even made up my own terms for this stuff. And the kids were like, yes, let's do that, right? But in time blocking, I realized there was actually freedom in that because I grossly underestimated what I could get done in a day. And I grossly underestimated what I could get done in an hour. So I would set my timer. I would do 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes in the afternoon or evening. I was on social media anyway. And I just started sharing my story. And I started three things that I love to share. Is one, educating. There's the three E's. So E for educating. Just started educating other people on what I was learning. That's it. I wasn't out to sell them anything. I was just out to educate them because I was learning something new. And I figured if I didn't know this, they probably didn't know that either. Number two, you're educating, you're entertaining. How fun. Like, oh my gosh, let's learn to laugh at ourselves. Listen, go to my page today. You'll see my hair. I was killing it. I did my hair this morning. It looks so cute. Then I went outside in the humidity. This is what you get, right? Leanne's like, yeah, I know. Listen, you're thinking this is, they're like, oh, that looks cute. I like your hair curly. I'm learning to embrace my curls. I don't have the beautiful hair like jo joke about. Gosh, I'm not even saying that right. Miss Dudley over there, she's, got, she's rocking her curls. Listen, um, you're like laughing, but when you see that before picture, you're like, oh, I see what she's saying, <laughs> right? Entertain, laugh at yourself. Have fun. Like, don't go on the crazy cycle, please. Like, we had enough crazy people out there sharing all sorts of stuff, but just don't do it. Michael Jordan, and it's one of my favorite quotes, and he will tell you, I got Republicans that buy my stuff. I got Democrats that buy my stuff. Like, listen, everybody has a gut. Everybody needs what you have to share. And you might be the only light that person ever sees on social media. So you're educating, you're entertaining, you're engaging, you're creating connections. When we let go of the pressure that we have to convince people to buy our stuff, and instead we start focusing on making intimate connections, relationships, that can change everything. But it helps in, in us because then all of a sudden like you release the pressure. Thank you, Ms. Dudley. I'm not going to try to say your first name. I'm going to need an educated class on that. But then all of a sudden, like your pressure releases and you don't have to like know it all. You don't have to be the gut guru microbiome expert. You get to be the tour guide. One of my favorite stories that John Maxwell shares, he's like going to be at convention, by the way. You're not going to want to miss that, right? So one of the things is that he talks about that there's two types of people, two types of leaders specifically. And there's one that is a travel guide, somebody who goes and books the, all the things like the cruise. Everybody's going on these cruises again, cruises are open, everybody's doing their thing. 
I know because my bestie's leaving on Monday without me. She's taking her husband this time. They're going on this Caribbean cruise and she went and she booked her tickets and she did all the things and the girl hooked her up. And then she asked her, well, like, where's a good place to go? What's like, where's a good place to eat? What's a place? To oh, I don't know. I've never been there. But she could tell her like, you know, I can book it for you. I can tell you, but I've never been there. And then there's the tour guide. The tour guide type of leader doesn't just tell you where to go. They're going to walk with you. They're going to show you where the coolest restaurants are. They're going to take you to the bottom of the waterfall to get the best selfie ever. And then they're going to do reels with you. Okay. That's what we are. You want to be that type of leader. You want to be the tour guide, not the expert. Because if you're an expert, then how does that make anybody coming up behind you feel like they have to be? They're going to feel like they got to know it all too. And to be honest, we're not medical professionals. We don't know it all. And it relieves so much pressure from me feeling like, oh, I got to know the things. So I tell people all the time, you don't have to know all the things. You just have to know where to go to find it. You have an incredible team page as a resource. Tap into that. Tap into your sponsor, your friend, your jewel. They might not know all the things either. It's okay. But together, you're going to figure it out. And what that does is it grows confidence in other people that they could do it too. Because you have good things to add and they have good things to add. And Mother Teresa says, together, we create something really beautiful. So when we're all in it together, we all win. So throughout that whole process, we went emerald in 13 months on zest, on zeal, because we loved the products. We loved the people that we were sharing with. And then you know what happened at that level? Because every level is another devil. So we're gonna go a little deeper, okay? There's a little more leadership for you guys because I feel like you can handle it. I didn't have any systems at all. Like we were so excited. We had so much zeal. We were bringing people in. It was fantastic and it was fun. But where'd they go? Like we didn't have, we didn't have customer care. Like I just assumed some of my people, like, yeah, they loved me. They stayed on the products because they saw me using it and they saw it working for me. And so my, my immediate people were pretty good and I was following up with them, but then their people's, 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 people's. They were falling through the cracks. They weren't having the same transformations. They weren't getting good customer care. They weren't getting followed up with. So we had to create a simple customer care program that worked for us. And that worked for most of the busy men and women that are on our team. And that simply was creating an ATM system where we added them to pages, we tagged them in relevant posts, we send them back the message with the link. So it's like dummy proof. You don't have to be social media savvy. Just go to Messenger, there's the link. And we started three-way messages so that we were making more connections. And that was how we grew to Diamond a year later. Now, it's been four years. We've been with Plexus for four and a half years. And I just got home from a trip to Australia. And what was crazy about all of that is getting the invitation was a huge honor, like huge. But remember that mindset crap I talked about needing help with in the beginning? Just because you get to another level doesn't mean that goes away. It's almost like an onion peel. Another layer comes back and you're like, oh, how do we dealt with that? It's deeper. We're going to go a little deeper. We're going to go a little deeper. So you know what? My word for the year is worthy. I'm like, really? Why can't it be like something happy? Like worthy is good, but it's work. Like there's a lot of work that you got to dig up to realize you are worthy. So that was my word. And it's because when that invitation came to go to Australia, 
I didn't know that I was the girl for the job. Every old negative mindset kept creeping in and telling me I wasn't smart enough. I didn't know enough. I wasn't the girl for the job. I'm not a good speaker. I stumble over my words. Heck, I open up some of my speeches farting. Yeah, pull out. If you've been in any of my Ruby Rising Ruby trainings, or yeah, you'll hear me. I share the story about how it was mic'd up and I went to the bathroom and that thing was live. Yep, that's how I open up when I start talking. So I'm like, are you sure you want me to come and talk to the whole Australian market? Then I'm like, well, then they all poop anyway, so they'll understand, right? I'm a product of the product. No, legit happened. So all that stuff starts creeping in. And I had to learn how to take my thoughts captive. Because what ends up happening is that you have this beautiful brain that has something called the RAS. It's the reticular activating system. This thing, you can prove me wrong anytime you want, but you won't because it works. Play the yellow car game with your kids. Get in the car. It's the best quiet car game ever, okay? We're gonna look, everybody's gotta be quiet. You can't talk. You have to look and focus from the yellow car. You can drive around town your whole life and never see a yellow car. But as soon as you start focusing on yellow cars, you're gonna see 25 of them in one day. And then you add a Snickers bar to that yellow car game, it's everywhere. Like first one to spot a yellow car. And then the next one is okay. They're everywhere. Yellow Hummers. Those yellow Hummers, you win a Snickers bar. You only realize there's somebody in your neighborhood driving a yellow Hummer like three doors down. And you never even saw it because your brain wasn't even focused on thinking it. It wasn't important until it was, right? So if your brain is that powerful and that strong to focus on a stupid yellow car, what is it gonna do when you focus on your dreams? When you start focusing on your goals? Can you imagine that at the same way we hear all the time what we focus on expands? So if you're not focused on a yellow car or if you're not focused on your goals or your dreams, but instead you're focusing on the negative, the I can't, it's not perfect, it doesn't look like hers, comparison. I don't have the same story. I don't look like her, I don't talk like her, I don't post like her. I don't have the same following. I'm not really good at this. Then what are you gonna self-prophesy? Guess what? All of that. And you're gonna prove yourself right because that's what your brain does. It goes to show you evidence of what you think. So if you think negative thoughts, those become beliefs. And those negative beliefs are then reinforced because your brain is going to go to work to find the evidence to tell you you're right. Then you create habits that create your outcome, which creates your destiny. So if you learn how to take your thoughts captive and you might not know it all, just flip your script. It's okay. I'm learning. I'm in process. I don't have the same testimony that she does. Great, mine's gonna be better. It's unique, it's mine. It doesn't have to look like anybody else's, right? How about the, I'm not smart enough. I'm learning. I'm not pretty enough. You're beautifully, wonderfully made and you're unique. You are enough. So you start changing the things you tell yourself and your brain will literally go to work to reinforce that and to show you evidence. It takes work and it's effort. So I fought through so much stuff to go to Australia that when I finally got there, I was so encouraged that I felt like for the first time, oh my gosh, I'm going to kill it. Like, I'm going to kill it. I'm going to kill it. I'm going to kill it. And then you take your bestie and she's like, got your back. She's like, you're going to kill it. You're just karate chop it. You're going to get it. I was like, oh, okay. At least, and then, cause I'm telling myself this. Cause I know my brain's going to go to work to tell me the evidence of it. Cause I'm really needing to believe it right now. And then you have somebody who's got your back. Right. And I got to step up and share in front of a room full of Australian women and men 
who were true overcomers and warriors. Their market launched months before COVID hit. And then their government shut them down till last October. So I came home with this aha, this epiphany, this like no holds barred. I don't have any excuses anymore. My government is free. I can go to Starbucks and not worry about being arrested. Right? I can go to Target. I can meet up. I can walk my streets. I don't have an excuse why I can't get out and make connections. Social media is a beautiful tool. But I'm here to tell you, you have so much influence right in your own backyard, right in your neighborhood, in your church, in your community, in your workplace. Like when you yourself are changing, remember, everything around you starts to change. So coming home from Australia with that newfound, like, oh, I went and I killed it. I did a great job. I was so proud of myself. I'm like, high five. I did it. I thought I did a great job. I had worked hard. I had studied. I went in prepared, I had a blast. I didn't second guess myself for the first time ever after speaking. I get a little emotional because if you ever speak in front of other people, do you ever go back and remember like, oh, I should have said this or, oh, I should have said that or, oh, that would have been really good. I could have done this better. I didn't do that. This was the first time I walked away like, Okay, I did it. Like, they're good. They're going to be okay. In the same way with the people that you talk to, the team that you're raising up, you can't screw them up, for lack of a better word. If you love them and you serve them well, you treat them like you want to be treated, you are a product of the product, you're not comparing journeys. You're just focused on being better tomorrow than you were today, you're going to be okay. So Joanna and Katie, I could keep talking, but I do want to leave this open. I know you guys said something about questions and answers. So I want to respect your time and give you all plenty of time. And this is your heads up. Listen, there's no TMI. Like you don't have to worry about that. I ask whatever you'd like to know. And if you have little people and we need to talk other stuff, then you just put little earbuds in. They'll be okay. Hear most. All right, I don't know. I had goosebumps so many times and I am just so thankful that you got on here and shared. I'm excited to hear anybody's questions if you have any. Also, um, it's Jacobin. That's how you say it. Think of okay. most Bible. There Jacobin. we go. Yes, just thought I'd mention that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I have a question, actually. Um, wow. Like I just, that was all so good and way to go on Australia. That was super fun to follow that. Um, so Kimberly actually, she hopped in our team thread on the first and shared like her story in a voice text and her journey. Um, it was so good. So I was just curious for everyone here to hear like when, cause she's like your like top team, right? Kimberly, is she your top leg? Would you say? No, actually no. So, well, it's interesting because because one of the ways that I've grown my business is very wide. So, so that's the beautiful part of our business model and our compensation plan specifically with Plexus. So she is a leg out of many. So I am actually very distributed evenly, which was fantastic. Now I'll tell you, I didn't necessarily plan it that way. It just is how it worked. But Kimberly was a dream teamer. Like I've known her for 15 years. My husband is her child, was her son's football coach. She was the cheerleading coach. And if you ever watch her or hear her talk, she is a cheerleader. Legit tried out for like Miami Dolphins cheerleader team. Like she has spirit fingers and everything. She can even do his toe touch still at 45. She still got it. Okay. She will show you if you ask her. Well, I knew when I started that I would love for her to do this business with me but I didn't want to freak her out and I didn't want to puke plexus on her. So I loved her where she was. 
And I made sure I was strategic with some posts too, that maybe just maybe would meet her where she was at, right? You have those people out there in your life. You're like, oh, this might resound with them, but I also prayed her in. I, I knew that when it was her time, it was her time and God was in it. You weren't going to be able to stop it. And that's exactly what happened. When it was her time, it was her time. She had fell in love. She knew the products worked because she had watched me for almost two years. Now it took two years. But if I had quit, if I had given up, if I hadn't been consistent, if I had kept posting, if I had just whatever, I don't know. She could have joined somebody else's team, right? She didn't know my business was open. And so when she joined, she just knew that the business model was the one for her. She had never even done network marketing before. So, so much fun because she would say, tell me what to do. I would tell her what to do. She would do it. It worked. <laughs> she was like, oh my gosh, this is fantastic. I'm like, I know. See, she didn't overanalyze it or overthink it or get into a critical spirit or the perfectionism try to kick in that would hold her back from doing anything. She was like, this stuff works. I don't have my own story yet, but I'm going to share yours. Like, heck, I'm going to share the heck out of your story. Everybody's going to hear about your story. But then guess what? She got a story too. And it was hers. It was unique. And then her business just blew up from there. And so she is one of our primary legs, but I, I am a two-star diamond. And what that means, I have two emerald legs. And then we have a host of senior gold, senior rubies, rubies, and all the downsides. But what's fun about Kimberly is that Kimberly has two emeralds on her leg. She has her husband, and then she has an emerald, Maria, who is speaking on stage this year. So we are really excited for you guys as a whole from corporate to be able to hear from her directly because Maria's got probably the most incredible life story of a woman that has been through insurmountable options and come out on top. And so I'm, I'm hoping and praying that's what she won't share about. Wow. That's, oh my goodness. So exciting. I cannot wait to hear from her. Um, and I, I loved, I wanted to bring up Kimberly cause I love two things. Like, I love that you like state, like you just were consistent. Like you showed her, like, you're going to go be successful with or without her. Like you followed up, you loved on her. Cause she didn't even join you till you were a jewel. Um, and so you didn't wait for like the dream teamer or whatever. Like you went out and found that success. And then, um, what was my second thing? can't remember, but I just, I love that timeline of that, that you, um, I just want everyone to hear that. Like she is incredible and she's like such a dream gamer, but she didn't join you until years in. And so just that consistency of like, go do the things people are watching and it matters. So love that. It absolutely does. And her last name's Brew Cal. You want to follow her. She is amazing. And you are going to see her do things that nobody's ever done before because she has this incredible belief and one of her backstories is she was really bullied as a child and she will freely tell you this stuff though but so she's got like this no bs meter okay she does and she's like not gonna take she has this godfidence about her that is just contagious and what is really cool to watch is that that like expands into her team and, and she just like, she doesn't stand for being bullied. She doesn't stand for whatever that looks like. And sometimes we bully ourselves with our mindset. And so she is a huge advocate for that and just an amazing person. So you're going to see, I think so much come out of that, out of her and her team and what that looks like. I wanted to add, Jenna has not mentioned, but she is also speaking at convention. Is that right, Jenna? So I am are so many reasons to go to convention, but this is a good one right here. Can you, uh, can't share your topic, but do you have any idea when you're going to be speaking, which day or anything? I do. I think, I don't know if I'm allowed to tell you about the church. I'm not allowed to tell you what, right? But I am speaking and just, let's just say, let's save the last, save the best for last. <laughs> I didn't really tell you, but yeah. So but there are some amazing, amazing leaders that are going to be taking that stage. They're going to be speaking. And, and it's not, not like John Maxwell, amazing. Valerie Burton, amazing. And I, I love hearing from them. But you know who I love the most are our own people. 
our own people. They're the men and the women that are in the trenches, just like you, just like me, day in, day out, they are showing up and they are building their own businesses. And they're taking time to turn around and pour back into us. So those are some of the people that I look up to because I can remember sitting in that arena for actually five years this summer eating rice cakes because my credit card got stolen in Las Vegas and I had zero money the whole week that I was in Las Vegas. I had rice cakes and almond butter in my bag. So my team knows they get rice cakes and almond butter every convention <laughs> as a reminder of what God can do. I went from living on rice cakes and almond butter and bottles of water, that first convention, to the next one coming back as an emerald. And then the next one coming back as a diamond. And then the next one coming back as a two star. And then this year, our goal is to come back as a five star diamond team. So, can God do it? Absolutely. And will He? Sure. But are you willing to do the work it's going to take? to get there. Whatever your goals are, whatever your dream is, your hopes, your aspirations, write them down. And then don't just leave it on paper. Get with your sponsor, get with your jewel and create an action plan. Small atomic habits compound into huge wins. So what else you guys got? I feel like we, I'm doing really good on time tonight. Faith asked, what's the most impactful book you've ever read? I believe is what she said. Yes. Oh, just one? Like, can I give you my list? <laughs> okay, so backstory. I have something called auditory processing disorder. It's a learning gift. I'm going to call it that. Um, it meant that I had a really hard time reading and retaining information growing up. Any background noise, anything that would come about behind me, the teacher speaking, the paper ruffling, anything, I couldn't retain the information that I was getting. So I told myself for a very long time, I'm not a good reader. I can't read. I don't have time to read. I can read Daisy the Duck to the kids, like children's books galore, but I didn't read anything that was of value to me personally until I went Emerald. And then I realized I needed to grow my leadership lid. So I learned to be a reader. Audible is my best friend. I love me some Audible. Okay. And then I learned that if I listened to it and I read it at the same time, it was like this kinesthetic learning thing kicked in and then I highlighted it. Oh, game on. I finally unlocked my learning style at 40 something years old. And I was able to share that with my kids, which was great, but I'm like excited for me. So some of my favorite things I've ever read, the first personal growth book I ever read was John Maxwell's 17 Indisputable Laws of Personal Growth. Oh, man, that was so good. I had it on repeat and I got the CD versions. We didn't even have Bluetooth in that one vehicle. It was CD and the kids would get in the van and we would plug in John and they were like, oh, it's John today. Yep. And we're gonna listen to chapter three. And it was the mobile command center. And then after that, I loved, loved, loved The Power of One More by Ed Milet. Wow. Just one more. One more chance. One more message. One more person. God, let me bless one more family. Like that was a really, really powerful book. And little ones along the way, which have been really fantastic, were... Um, the Power of Five for Network Marketers by John Maxwell. If you haven't read that, that was really fun and easy to read, but it gave me like a aha uh -huh on the industry that I hadn't seen before. Because I mean, there's a lot of people out there that slam network marketing and direct sales, but they just don't know what they don't know. And I'm thinking like John Maxwell wrote a book with some of our top diamonds, by the way. If he's endorsing it as a good business model, there you go. Put an exclamation point in that, call it a day, right? That was a really good one. And then the last one I read, for those that are serious about building this business, would really encourage you to read the book, Go Pro by Eric Worre. Now, this is very high level. I will tell you now. 
but it was and is a really good foundational book for you to understand the professionalism that you can have by being a professional network marketer. Now there's lots of people that come in and we get our products covered and that's fantastic. That's where I started. And then I learned that there was something more and then there was something more and then there was something more. So reading that recently was like a, like this is, I'm proud. I'm extremely proud to be a professional network marketer. Does anybody ever ask you like, what is it that you do? And, and you don't really know what to say. You're like, what's the answer today? Like I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I'm a mother, I'm a I share products. No, I'm a professional network marketer with the premier gut health company that's expanding globally. Is there any reason why you would want to hear more? Let me say it again. <laughs> because what ends up happening is like, they're like, oh, what is that? That's the coolest thing ever. Because then they're asking you, what is it that you do? I help men and women achieve their health goals through holistic means with all natural plant-based products. We balance blood sugar, we fight inflammation, and we work on gut health. And they're like, oh, I'd like more information on that. Great. The old school business cards, those are still effective. And Vistaprint is fantastic. Canva, you can have so much fun on there. And just be creative and be you. So those are like some of my favorites. Babe, is there anything else? Kenny's laying on the couch over there. It's like the Bible. Yes. Can't go wrong, right? Best leadership book ever. So, oh, I just remember the prayer of Jabez. That's my secret weapon. I forgot to mention that. The prayer of Jabez is a book by Bruce Wilkerson. We've been praying that every single day for the last four years. That book, that, Katie, that's it. Got one. If you don't read nothing else, just read that one book. You'll be all right. I literally just gave that one to my nine-year-old to read for her next leadership book. Cause I'm paying her $5 for personal growth books. <laughs> um, I just handed it to her the other day, but I haven't read it for years. So I need to read it myself. All right. We are going to wrap up. Jenna, thank you so much. I can't even tell you how much of a blessing your testimony has been an encouragement. We have a lot of, um, we have a lot of older people here who've been in this company business for a while, but we do have quite a few new faces that have jumped on the call even tonight or who will be rewatching this. And I think it's just going to be so encouraging, so motivating. So just like I'm right where I need to be feeling when they watch this. And I just really appreciate your investment into our team tonight. We really appreciate your time and we cannot wait to hear from you at convention. I'm so excited for you, um, but you all have a good evening and we will let you get off here. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you.